Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Saints uh, completed their second preseason game. Looking ahead to the final preseason game this Friday in the Dome. Uh, obviously against the Chargers. Mike Triplett, good enough to join us here for a couple of minutes. Mike, we appreciate it. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Uh, always appreciate it. Uh, do you think there is any chance at all we see Jameis Winston on Friday against the Chargers? Yeah, I think there's some chance. Dennis Allen has kept it close to the vest. I have to think, and I tried asking him last night, uh, and, and he didn't give a direct response, but I, I just tried asking if his plans changed at all because of injuries um, this preseason. Uh, and he said, obviously, it's constantly evolving. But I, I I have to think that the initial plan would have been, yes, they'd like to see Winston play a couple series, maybe a quarter of the preseason once. I don't know if that would have been the second preseason game or if it would have been the third preseason game. But I really don't know if his injury status changes that. If the fact that now they're dealing with this minor foot injury, and, and, and it does seem minor, he was already back in full team drills. He was doing some things last week in Green Bay. Um, but that, that could have changed the plan. Like, if they did want to have him play a quarter or a half of preseason football, maybe now they'll say it's not worth it anymore. So uh, it remains to be seen, but I'm not going to rule it out yet. Do you have a sense, Mike, on how this coaching staff is going to handle the third preseason game? Because we didn't no, <laughs> it, yeah, right. We didn't get to see them play three games last year. No, exactly. We've never seen them play three preseason games, so we don't know how they would handle it. And and look, just the whole league is evolving to less and less activity in the preseason. Everybody outside of Andy Reid, it seems, is playing their starters less and less in the preseason in recent years. And then last year, they had a quarterback battle going on, so we did see more of Winston and Taysom Hill. Um, and, and I, uh, my instinct last year was that we were going to see Ian book a lot in the third preseason game that never happened, uh, after they had already named, uh, or it already, you know, James Winston had already looked like he'd earned the starting job with how well he played in the second preseason game last year. So, um, it's constantly evolving this year. It's different because there's no quarterback controversy, but it's also different because Winston got dinged up. Um, uh, and Michael Thomas has gotten a little dinged up. So they might just say, you know what? Um, let, you know, James Hurst is a little dinged up uh, as starting offensive lineman. They might just say, let's just get these guys healthy and we'll be one of the teams that doesn't play our starters this year. But I, I, I don't know if it's a hard and fast rule or, or if it depends on how things are evolving during camp, too. Mike, you have a best guess what they're going to do with Ian Book. I guess, are they going to keep three quarterbacks on the 53? <laughs> well, I don't think they need to keep them on the 53 no matter what. Um, he does not strike me as the kind of guy who's shown enough or was in high enough demand that, you know, they have to keep him on the 53 or else another team would snatch him up and sign him to their active 53. So um, I think if they keep him, it would be on the practice squad. And, I, and, and, you know, I mean, I suppose it's possible they keep him on the 53 uh, and maybe he moves to the practice squad later when they need the numbers. Uh, but we've seen a lot of third Saints quarterbacks spend time on the practice squad over the years, including Chase Daniel, including Garrett Grayson, um, so, you know, it's not completely uncommon. I think the bigger and tougher decision that this staff is going to have to make is if Andy Dalton or Jameis Winston suffers an injury in September, do they trust Ian Book enough to be their number two quarterback on game day? Um, I think that's a big if right now. I, I don't think they're going to completely give up on developing him. But are they ready for him to be one snap away from playing in a game in September? And that's a big if. Uh, the other two options would be Taysom Hill being ready uh, in in the case that that happened. But he's dealing with injuries of his own. And, and then obviously, you know, a veteran who, who gets released by another team this summer. Do they make a call like they did to Trevor Simeon midseason? So I think there's a lot still in the air with that right now. So, Mike, who then becomes the beneficiary of that roster spot? If you don't keep a third quarterback, you'll have right. the opportunity to keep an extra player somewhere else, presumably. It's so many. I mean, uh, I actually think fans should 
especially the fans who like can't believe when you're going to cut a uh, you know Dijon Dixon who's looked really good, or even a Kirk Merritt who's looked really good. Uh, when you're trying to be like, well, you can't put seven receivers on your team. Uh, you can't put five running backs and a fullback on your team. It's such a f- interesting exercise because year after year, my last three spots are, do I keep a 10th offensive lineman or do I keep a sixth receiver or do I keep a fullback or do I keep an 11th defensive back? I mean, it's it's not, it's never a one-for-one correlation. It's where can you... Uh, where can you afford to go lighter? Because there's some people you just don't want to get rid of. Um, uh, and that answer, you know, that answer could be a Kirk Merritt, who, you know, they've got him playing running back this week because they're they're sort of in a. Well, let's find out everything he can do, and I think I think that's a good <laughs> sign for him because I think he is their seventh receiver right now in the pecking order. But if he's also their fourth running back on a game day and their backup kick returner and he's running down covering some kicks, then maybe you can squeeze him on. Uh, Traquan, he's gone, right? Gone? I don't think that. No, I, no! I really don't. Um, no! And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I don't think so is because once you get down to the fifth receiver or a fourth receiver who's going to be active on a game day, it's, it's for a reason. You're not just picking the top six pass catchers, playmaking pass catchers. And we know they're top three when everyone's healthy. It's Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, and Chris Olave. And I think Deontay Hardy can also be written in pen because he's so good as a kick returner and as a deep threat. So if another receiver is going to be active on game day, it's got to be for another reason other than, well, he catches passes pretty good. Um, so it's got to be either you're a special team specialist uh, that stands out above all the others, or you're you know you're a gunner, or you're a kick coverage guy, or you're a kick returner. But in in Traquan Smith's benefit, he's probably the best blocking wide receiver on the team. He's probably the guy when they only have when they have two tight ends and a running back and a fullback and the one big receiver that they throw to every once in a while on play action. The, the Robert Meacham role from so many years. Uh, you know, I, I think he's the best in that role, and that's what would keep him on the team. Now, if you have a couple injuries and you need a starting X, then Trey Smith. But the reason Trey Quan Smith has been around for a long time is because of his total body of work, which includes probably being the best blocker of that entire position group. Um, so that makes it interesting how that shakes out. Uh, but uh, Trey Quan Smith is. Uh, Hmm. I'm never going to sing his praises and say, I swear, you're not seeing him in camp. This is the year. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a reason we're on year five of Trey Fun Smith. He does a lot of things the team's like when he's healthy. No, it's not because he can catch the ball. We know that much. Uh, Mike Triplett <laughs> is with us. He's on Twitter at Mike Triplett. Um, what are they going to do at linebacker, Mike? That's a really interesting one. Um, it's, it's, you know, every game you watch and almost every practice you watch, you could pick a different two guys who stood out um, above the rest. And, you know, it was like they just signed this John Bostick out of nowhere last week, and he played great in the game. Um, right. We saw Chase Hansen play so great in the first game. Nephi Sewell has, has played really great and started to get some uh, attention, uh, especially how he played the other night. I think Eric Wilson has been the best of the bunch uh, consistently all summer long and in both of the preseason games. I'm going to project him to make the roster. I'll, I will project, uh, you know, Kate Nellis and Andrew Dowell to make the roster because those are, again, guys who have earned their spots in different ways, um, uh, special teams especially with Andrew Dowell. Um, but I don't think every guy I just listed is going to make the team, so that is going to be one of the, the harder – there you go. There's, a, there's an example of – yeah, maybe you keep a sixth or seventh linebacker instead of a third quarterback. Mike, I'm always fascinated by camp and preseason games, and I I tell the audience all the time I'm kind of a junkie because I I think those conversations are fascinating. Who who's going to be number fifty two, fifty three on the roster? Because on game days, the last guy who's activated matters. They always matter because you have so few of them, and everybody's going to play on a Sunday. But there's also the 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 guys who are stars, and we know that, and that's always going to be more what drives you towards wins and losses. Do you feel like you've come through this part of camp with one week left feeling a certain way about a position group or a player that you didn't feel coming in, either good or bad? Uh, That's a good question. My biggest thing that I needed answered about this team heading into training camp was 
are, are they going to be healthy enough to really be optimistic? I mean, there were a lot of people that if healthy, we were going to be really optimistic about, and that was a big if. Uh, Michael Thomas and Jameis Winston being the top of the list. Taysom Hill being part of that list. Marcus Davenport being part of that list. Uh, Marcus May being part of that list. And I, I think the answer is still kind of an incomplete uh, because it was really, really promising when Winston and Thomas were doing as much as they were on the first day of practice, and so was Taysom Hill. Uh, but all of them have since developed like unrelated secondary injuries. And it's like, all right, so two steps forward, one step back. Uh, uh, Marcus Davenport isn't quite all the way back yet, but he's on the mend. If all of those guys... Were, had gone through a fully healthy camp, and it's still possible that all of them are going to be, you know, fully participating in practice on Wednesday of week one. Then, uh, you know, I'm truly, truly optimistic in this team. If if any of those guys, any of those four guys in particular, is is limited or out in week one of the season, then then I think it's a little bit of hold your breath a little bit more. Hey Mike, before you go, um, the NFC South has seen some some. You know, fluctuation as well. We know Baker is going to be the starter. There's a lot of injuries and just drama in Tampa right now. How do you feel about the division right now? Here, a couple of weeks from the opener, I think it's it's gettable. Like I'm not going to say it's easy. Um, and I think the Carolina and Atlanta games will be just as you know competitive. You know, there, there's very few actual pushovers in the league, and we just saw the Saints. Miss the playoffs because they lost to each one of those teams last year. But if if you're talking about roadblocks that are outside of your control, this is kind of the this is the condition you want your division to be in. I mean, you don't want to be in the AFC West right now, and you do want to be in the NFC South. I think Atlanta and Carolina are both going through transition periods, um, and it'll be a huge disappointment if the Saints aren't better than both of those teams. And and I don't think. Tampa, you know, Tampa Bay is still the team to beat um, after what they've done the last two seasons. But, you know, they're dealing with injuries. They're dealing with retirement. They're dealing with (laughs) coaching change themselves. Um, They're also a team that, you know, is not unbeatable right now. So the Saints are in prime position that if they play as well as they can, you know, this is a, a winnable division. If not even more than that. I mean, it's probably one of the divisions you'd most want to be in in the NFL right now. Uh, it, it, I feel I've said this often, Mike. The more this training camp has gone along, I have gotten more bullish on the Saints for a lot of the reasons you mentioned. Their stars are appear healthy, and there's just the division feels pretty wide open right now. Um, we're almost here, and uh, we're gonna start finding out those answers once they tee it up and kick it off for real. Of course, you can follow along all season at ESPN.com. He's on Twitter at Mike Triplett. Always appreciate the time, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.